So here we are, we're working on this uh, duplex and brushing and rolling the trim. And now one of the reasons why I am brushing and rolling, I'm doing some rolling, I'm actually hand brushing the door jams, hand brushing the baseboards. I'll be doing rolling uh, some doors to get the paint on faster and then back brushing them. But one of the reasons why we're doing this is the trim itself has been hand brushed and rolled, you know, over the last 50 years, many times. It's got heavy brush marks. It's had heavy nicks, dings, and runs on it. And spraying the trim, you're not gonna get like that automobile-like glassy finish on there because of what you got on here existing. And now the customer doesn't have it in their budget to strip this down to bare wood. It would take an enormous amount of work to do that, to really restore it down to bare wood. You could rip it out and put new trim in, and that's also not in their budget. Their budget is to you know paint it this is a rental and we want to just get on a really nice finish part of the look of this is going to be you know an older home an older vintage style look and the hand brush look actually looks really good in situations like this in these older homes and we're using benjamin more advanced benjamin more advanced is des specifically designed to brush and roll it levels out lays out absolutely amazing brushes really well it does take two coats but i don't have a huge house. I only got a few door jams here. I've got one, two, three door jams in this entire house. Well, I got the front door jam, so half of an interior door jam, so it's not a lot of work. You could mask and spray, but it's um, creating a lot of dust. We've got multiple people working in here, uh, plumbers, electricians, so I don't want to be spraying and creating dust. And once again, I, I'm trying to achieve a hand, you know, brushed on look on this um on these door jams and on this these baseboards here once again it really just comes down to customer expectations and um you know the customer's budget so i'm going to start hand brushing and rolling you can see i've um got on here um bondo we put bondo all over here to get rid of nicks and dings i've brushed a coat on the lighting the brand new lighting they installed the led lighting that has showed up even more imperfections that i just didn't like so you know we can't get rid of all of them because it's just going to be out of the customer's budget but we're just getting rid of the bulk of them and then we'll begin hand uh, brushing and rolling it so i'm going to um, start brushing i've got you can see i forgot to sand one um door jam there i'm going to hit that door jam before i start right here last sanding i just missed So to start off by just quickly dusting, I've done all my sanding, just gonna quickly dust these things off, make sure there's nothing on them before I start hand brushing. The one door here was installed um, for reasons of working in a room in an enclosed space with a door, spraying door, so we didn't spray or get overspray dust all over the place. And then start hand brushing and rolling. So, I keep saying rolling, but I'm not actually rolling the door jams. I'm just brushing them. If I'm doing a large surface like that, grabbing my ladder because I want to get hit the tops of these door jams. It's amazing. Nobody ever painted the tops of these things before. So we definitely want to paint the tops. And by painting the tops that they're not bare wood, it makes it a lot easier to clean. So when it comes to brushing your trim, I really like a really soft filament brush and I think DuPont makes a really soft filament called Tynex. It's nylon, um, it's their version of nylon. Absolutely amazing. Premier's Hampton brush is, is a Tynex filament brush. So it's all um, Tynex nylon and it's, it's gonna less likely rope your trim than any other filament out there. So you want something that's gonna be soft, something that's not going to rope your trim or leave brush strokes is what we'd call it. So I'm gonna get my paint on, just gonna get it on, lay it out with the grain. So I'm gonna be 
laying it out. As I get it on, I'm going to lay it out in an upward motion. It's gonna take two coats. So I'm just brushing it out and I'm spreading my paint out so it has a nice even film, even thickness on it. If you get it you know, thick and heavy in certain areas, the thick areas could run. So I'm gonna get it on, even it out, then I'm going to lay it out upward so it's less likely to run once again. One of the great things about the Benjamin Moore Advance is it dries slow. It doesn't dry super fast. So it gives you working time. A lot of modern day trim paints dry way too fast. And that's what causes you're trying to lay out your paint back brush or back roll it and it starts to rope uh, because it's drying too fast. So this Benjamin Moore Advance, it's a um, waterborne alkyd. It dries a lot slower than the majority of paints out there for trim and cabinets. So, I mean, for a do-it-yourself or somebody brushing cabinets, I always spray our cabinets, but if you had to do any brushing for any type of reason, I mean, there's always scenarios where you're, you may have to do some brushing. Benjamin Moore Advance is absolutely amazing. So I started from the top, work down the one side, and I'm just gonna start working my way back up this other side. I'm not gonna try to put a ton on the, down there below where it'll start to puddle. And I'm just going to get it down there, work it, and start working it up. And once again, if you take, if you do your layout and you lay it out in a downward motion. So if I put my paint on and lay it out like this at the end of where it lays it out, it's going to have a tendency to run easier if you lay out in a downward stroking motion. Once again, I want to paint what we call with the grain. So, and what I mean by that is it's the door jams going up this way. I don't want to paint coming across this way because the direction of the trim is going vertical and not horizontal. So I'm going to paint this one side. I've got the door installed. I'm going to remove this door to paint the other side. We don't ever want to, this actually 1950s remodel we're doing the trim and or the actual doors had 50 years of paint built up on it and just incredible how much paint was built up on these um, hinges and instead of buying new hinges we wanted the old hinges to stay with it so you kind of have that vintage look we took the hinges off the doors soaked them in lacquer thinner and cleaned up all the paint there's latex paint will base paint i mean you name it it was put on this door and got on hinges cabinet hinges the cabinet hinges are just completely irreplaceable um not fixable um but the door hinges are really cool style door hinges so that's what that looks like, brushing that door jam. Got one right here. I'll show you brushing and rolling this one. short runs like this I can just lay it out across the whole run there 
the Bondo, it always takes, you know, two coats to cover the Bondo. People do ask me, do you need to prime it? And there are paints out there I know I've used in the past, um, paints that actually uh, have a reaction with the Bondo and cause outgassing and pinholes in it. And we would s just spot prime the Bondo with Ben, ben Shellac primer and it would stop it. All the current paints I'm using nowadays, um, they don't have a problem with the Bondo and outgassing and causing pinholes. So I don't, I don't currently spot prime it. I just brush two coats. We always, if we're brushing, even spraying, we always put on two coats of paint. So some clients are now and some architects are actually specifying in the specs that walls even be painted, uh, be brushed to have a brushed on look to them. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's starting to get more and more popular to, to see that. I do like using this, once again, this brush, I got a, um, this is a two inch angled sash brush. I do like my filaments to be angled because it's just more, to me, it's more versatile, the brush. It makes getting in corners a lot easier. So having an angled filament to your brush, you can even use brushes that hold more paint. If I was doing a lot of trim in this house, you could use a brush. I call them like fat boy brushes. They're thicker and they'll hold more paint. But this one, um, this is the one I had available to me today and it's working fabulous. We've got the job site dog with us today. Again, it's Maya. She's visiting, um, saying hi. I've used Benjamin more advanced this paint. I've used it to actually spray cabinets before. And you know, I think it's an incredible paint for brushing rolling. It's the best product I've ever used if I've got to, you know, brush trim and which I we don't do very often, but it's there isn't anything better than this product in my opinion. Spraying cabinets, it's a little more difficult because it does have a long, longer dry time. It takes 16 hours to cure and dry before you can sand it. And so when it comes to doing cabinets, we're trying to get our cabinets coated, you know, multiple coats in one day. And so we're using different paints like 2K polys. Um, and just a little bit different technology. But this stuff is, um, so for cabinet painting, once again, it's, you know, just the dry times, um, stack times, cure times. The cure time, I believe, is around 30 days on this product. So, you know, you gotta be really careful. High traffic stuff like cabinets, you know, the customer could easily scratch, nick or ding the cabinets. They're not really careful. The trim isn't necessarily nearly as high traffic as what we would consider um, the cabinets are. So you can see just working. Part of the key is just not getting it on too heavy. It's really looking at it while you're applying it, looking at your paint making sure you're leveling it out, evening it out and not having where I initially put it on right there. That's where it's heavy. I've got to begin spreading it out right there. Otherwise it's going to run. Stuff is hangs pretty amazing. What we call hang it's um, and what the term hanging means, you know, it doesn't run really easy. So if it hangs really well, it doesn't run very easy in this product. As long as you lay it out properly, it hangs incredibly. But you just kind of got to watch 
as you're laying it out, understanding that it's, it's all evened out. Your brush strokes are all going in the same direction. Because even though it levels out amazing, you still end up with very, very slight brush strokes. So you want your brush strokes always going in the right direction of whatever you're painting. So it doesn't take you know, very long. Some people think that they can brush and roll trim faster and you can mask and spray it. I guess I'd argue that, but um, just all depends um, how fast you are brushing. But when it comes down to the most finishes, new construction up here, the standards is that it has to have an automobile factory like finish on it. And the only way to achieve that without brush strokes is by hand brushing and rolling it. So I've got those two sides of those two door jams done. I'm gonna continue on the opposite side here. The other side there, we'll move that door, get this door done, show you the baseboards. We do, we're hand brushing and rolling the baseboards. I've got they're so banged up, dinged up, nicked up. We've been caulking them, bondoing them, spackling them. Um, they've, there was carpet in here at one time and the carpet, there was just carpet fuzz. They just painted it and got it all stuck to the baseboard. So we're scraping it with a Linbide scraper to get all that carpet fuzz off and make them look better. They're looking a lot better than they were, we were caulking the corners of them and stuff but there you have it when it comes to trim too like it's all banged up like this one of the advantages to brushing it too is it's getting it down in the cracks and crevices and stuff that spraying will just bridge the gap and not necessarily fill the gap and so we're trying to fill the little pinholes gaps and crevices where the where we're scraping, where there was carpet fuzz and stuff like that. It's making it look a lot better by brushing it also. One you know, trick when it comes to brushing and rolling and even spraying too when I'm doing trim, you know, if you want your paint to dry faster, this unit here, even though it's a 1950s unit, it has uh, forced air heating in it. So you can uh, crank up the heating you know, if you want the paint to dry faster, when we're spraying trim, you know, we want to load it on. A lot of times we'll try to spray the trim in one coat if it's white on white. So we'll crank up the temperature in the unit so it'll dry faster. When it comes to brushing and rolling, you want to have the temperature down a little bit lower. I've got it like in the mid 60s in here. That way you're not drying too fast because the paint dries too fast. It's going to coagulate and it's going to cause you to get more roping or brush strokes. Once again, as um, some people know and understand it, you can also add, you know, if you're using, you know, not a trim product that's specifically designed to brush and, um, level out and lay out so in a, in a dry is drying too fast and causing you know roping you can add latex extender a product that um it's called xim latex extender so it, it slows down your dry time it helps the paint level better and i think it's like these products like benjamin more advanced they have these leveling agents and, and products that do slow down the dry time to give you more working time. So what happens if I was to go back and I look at this door jam, if I tried to go back and say, if I missed something right in the middle somewhere, if I tried to brush over that right now, it's already trying to already starting to skim over on the top. It will actually, rope really bad and leave heavy brush strokes. So one of the tips to 
you know, doing trim and getting good results is getting your paint on, laying it out, make sure you lay it out correctly, make sure you got it everywhere, and then don't go back and touch it until it dries. If you miss a spot, wait till it dries, then go back and you know hit that spot you missed. But you don't want to, once it begins to dry, try to hit it again, because it's what I like to say, it's already starting to coagulate, get sticky, and you can actually feel it when you start to go back over it. So I'm gonna give you a look at what it looks like to roll. So I'm rolling a coat on these doors now. So there's a couple options. You could roll these things and back brush them. You can roll it and leave them. I'm just getting a coat on them right now. We're gonna end up pulling them off um, we've got a major challenge ahead of us trying to get them off because the screws are completely filled with paint. But you can get a lot more paint on if they're laying down, but it's going to take us a while to get them off. So I'm just going to get a coat on them while they're standing up and show you. You can roll it. They've been rolled many times. <clears throat> you can roll it and then back brush it. If they're hanging, <clears throat> I'm gonna back brush an upward motion because I want the back brush look to match my door jams. It's getting on a thin coat of paint when you're rolling it. Just roll it, get it all even leveled out before you back brush it. You don't want to have any trailing edges like that. That'll run. Now I'm going to back brush it. piece of debris on there. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. It's just very light pressure back brushing. We're going to let this dry and then sand it and coat it one more time. Hopefully we can get it off, the hinges off, to replace these hinges, scrape these runs, clean that all up. But at least I got a coat on there now. Actually, these were red. I did one bondoed some stuff, did a coat, bondoed again as more stuff started to show up. And now our final coat, see a big old huge run up top. I'm gonna need to scrape off here. Show you what it looks like if you wanted to roll your door jams and back brush them it's another option i could just roll it it's going to get my paint on significantly faster it 
and then I can just back brush that. upward motion. So here's a, typically walls like this, we would do our walls in the wall paint. The floor is wood down here. It's a um, closet. I'm gonna, just to get the paint on quickly. I'm going to use a four inch roller to get it on quickly. It's got a little quarter round at the bottom and that quarter round will be our trim color. And then the walls will be our wall color. Once again, this would be something we, we would typically spray this closet for speed, but we cannot spray because we've got multiple contractors working in here. Typically on something like this, I would work from top to bottom. Just wanted to show you rolling what it would look like. so. That's rolled one coat. Now I'll paint the closet, then I'll come back and do the second coat on the floor of the closet. So there you have it, some tips and tricks, brushing and rolling trim and trim work, door jams, baseboards. If you've got any tips or tricks yourself, leave it down in the comment section below. I learn from you just like you learn from us. So we love to hear what you have to say, you know, down in the comment section below. If you got any video ideas you want us to shoot, just put that also in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget, hit it, give us a thumbs up. It really encourages us to keep making these videos and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we come out with a new video. It's free, like it's always been for the last 12 years, it's gonna be free for another 12 years. Subscribe and notify, it helps support us. Like we always say, also, we'll see you next time right here on Paint Life TV. Out.